you know, you've worked on psych for 37 over the, over that uh, many years. Have you ever considered quitting? I mean, has it been too much? So I'm sure there's an optimism in the early days that this is going to be way easier. And let me ask it another way too, because I've talked to a few people on this podcast, AI folks, that bring up Psych as an example of a project that has a beautiful vision and it's a, it's a beautiful dream, but it never really materialized. That's how it's spoken about. Um, I suppose you could say the same thing about neural networks and all all, all ideas um, until they are. <laughs> so what? Um, why do you think people say that, first of all? And second of all, did you feel that ever throughout your journey? And did you ever consider quitting on this mission? We keep a very low profile. We don't attend very many conferences. We don't give talks. We don't write papers. We don't play the academic game mm -hmm. at all. And as a result, um, people often only know about us because of a paper we wrote 10 or 20 or 30 yeah. um, or 37 years ago. Uh, they only know about us because of what someone else secondhand or thirdhand said about us. So thank you for doing this podcast, by the way. Sure. It, it, uh, it uh, shines a little bit of light on some of the fascinating stuff you're doing. So. Well, I think it's time for us to keep a higher profile mm -hmm. uh, now that we're far enough along that other people can begin to help us with the the final N percent, maybe N is maybe 90%. But um, now that we've gotten this knowledge pump primed, it's going to become very important for everyone to help if they are willing to, if they're interested in it. Uh, retirees who have enormous amounts of time and would like to leave some kind of legacy uh, um, to the world. Uh, people because of the pandemic who have more time uh, at home or for one reason or another on to be online and contribute. If we can raise awareness of how far our project has come and how close to being primed the knowledge pump is, then we can begin to harness um, this untapped amount of humanity. I'm not really that concerned about professional colleagues' opinions of yeah. our project. I'm interested in getting as many people in the world as possible actively helping and contributing to get us from where we are to really covering all of human knowledge and different human opinion, including contrasting opinion, that's that's worth representing. So I think that's that's one reason. Um, um, a, I, I don't think there's, there was ever a time where I thought about quitting. There are times where I've become depressed a little bit about how hard it is to get funding for the system. Occasionally there are AI winters and things like that. Occasionally there are um, AI uh, what you might call summers, where people have said, why in the world didn't you sell your company to um, you know, company X for um, some large amount of money when you had the opportunity and so on. And you know, company X here are like old companies maybe you've never even heard of, like Lycos or something like that. So um, uh, the, the answer is that one reason we've stayed a private company, we haven't gone public, one reason that we haven't um, gone out of our way to take investment dollars is because we want to have control over our future, uh, over our state of being, so that we can continue to do this as until it's done. And we're making progress, and we're now so close to done that almost all of our work is commercial applications of our technology. So five years ago, almost all of our money came from the government. Now, uh, virtually none of it comes from the government. Almost all of it is from companies that are actually using it for something. Hospital chains using it for medical reasoning about patients um, and um, energy companies using it and uh, various other uh, you know, man manufacturers using it to reason about supply chains and things like that. 